Hello, Stoddard. Hello, Jeff. How are Hi. you? Hi, I'm great. How are you doing? Great. It's good to connect. Good. Yeah, great to connect. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, coming on here. Of course. Uh, I love yeah. the new song. I love the new song. You've done a great job with it. Oh, thank you. That's uh, And that's a demo that's before mixing or mastering, but this is like a sneak peek right now, and it will be released beginning of next year. Um, Excellent. But yes, yeah, so I, I really wanted to connect with you because you've honestly been a, a partially a guiding light for me. Um, in my 20s, I read your books, uh, Rewind, Replay, Repeat, uh, and When in Doubt, Make Belief. And I reached out. So we've had a correspondence for a while. Um, and my, my OCD is centered around um, perfection in relationships and romantic relationships, especially. And I just thought I'd... I'd like to start a blog that also occasionally is a video blog where um, I talk to people who um, have experienced OCD's wrath. Um, and so can you just speak to uh, OCD just, just for a moment about, you know, what kind of OCD you've struggled with? Sure. So my form of OCD, my flavor is often described as hit and run or harm OCD at the mm -hmm. core of every obsession I've ever had is this what if question. We're going to talk a lot about what if questions today. I know you see those as well in yes. your world. Um, yes. My what if questions are always something to the effect of what if unknowingly through my negligence, I harmed or might harm someone or something. So that was always the core what if question. And that led to compulsions that range from checking on things to seeking reassurance over and over again. Uh, to That's scrubbing right. my hands so that I wouldn't contaminate other people and unknowingly harm them. Uh, kind of an endless list of compulsions, but they were all aimed at dislodging that really uncomfortable what if question that I might have harmed someone through my negligence unknowingly. My earliest memories of our OCD, of OCD, Stoddard, go back to um, my childhood. I was probably seven or eight years old when I started replaying in my head sequences. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. kind of rewind them in my head and replay them. Hence the title of my first book, Rewind, Replay, Repeat. Yes. And yes. I was trying to remove the uncertainty. Um, you know, one of the great right. ironies for those of us with OCD is that the only real way to navigate uncertainty is to embrace uncertainty. And instead we run from it. We try to get rid of it at every turn with our compulsions. Um, and so my earliest childhood memories uh, are of lying in bed late at night, replaying sequences in my head and trying to remove any uncertainty from them. Who was that who said hello to me from a passing car? Um, what did I overhear in a conversation at school? That sort of thing. I had a period of dormancy in my OCD life for okay. about eight or nine years. My mm -hmm. high school and college years were pretty much symptom free. And then adult onset OCD kicked in in a big way in my late 20s. I see. Okay. And, and would you say that those, the, the compulsions were it's, it's going back and trying to find that one little moment that can make you feel like a brief moment of lucidity or that you did something right, or that you didn't hurt someone or, um, I'm going to tie that now to hiccups here to this little snippet that we're going to listen to. And this basically the reassurance that Shiloh, the main character is getting about Liza, his partner, is is various things do we have the right humor together do we um you know will we be good parents together even though it's way far off you know things like that or uh maybe when i gave her the flowers did she smile enough did that show me that we're right you know so that this is general in the lyrics that you're listening to but it's basically to how you feed this um like invisible beast you feed him little bits little treats that oh he's always oh, he's, he's satisfied for a moment and then he comes lashing out or stabs you in the back later. But so let me share my screen. Um, so basically when you're saying you were rewi rewinding and replaying. Um, this is what Shiloh's doing. The view's amazing. Right now, no turbulence inside. But what if we're not right? I've got the hiccups from hell. The hiccups from hell. And as long as I keep feeding the thoughts that keep repeating i'll just continue needing them gone gone be gone i come with flowers and hours of passion and hours 
hours devour my need to even move, but the groove won't soothe my unrelenting need to cast an anxious spell. I start the morning adoring her, never ignoring her, pouring my heart out on the sleeve, and I leave and I breathe. But something reminds me of the times we didn't click so well. I've got the hiccups from hell, stuck in hiccups hotel. And as long as I keep feeding the thoughts that keep repeating, they'll just continue leading me on. Something slanted. All right. So, so it's basically the theme of this is that something is slanted, right? You feel like oh, something's off. So I've got to go back to that drawing board in my mind and, and fix it, make it not off kilter. But it's like, the thing is life is slanted, right? And at the end of this song, that's kind of the, the thing, like life is confusing. Life is not going to be sincere or not sincere, um, certain. Would you say that in those times of when you're really off culture, do, does it feel like your life is almost upside down or slanted or, yeah. Absolutely. I, I'd love to share a few thoughts. First of all, great song. I mean, catchy beyond everything else, but the lyrics are really powerful. A couple things oh, come to you. mind for me, Stoddard, with this song. First of all, slanted. Like you say, life is slanted for everyone. For those of us with OCD, it can be really slanted, really mm -hmm. off kilter. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's one vicious cycle after it another that I'm a part of, that I'm willfully a part of when I'm giving into my OCD. The other thing that came to mind with the term slanted was sort of the bias that that, that sort of refers to as well. Um, the mm -hmm. world that I see as presented from my OCD is in fact very biased or slanted. Yes. It, the universe in this world is out to get me. The filters that the, the universe or my OCD would, would filter everything through are fear and doubt. So I have a very biased view of the world, thanks to my OCD, at least when I give into it. And that's a very slanted view as well. So both of those thoughts came to mind with the term slanted. Oh, I, I love, love, love the lyric. As long as I keep feeding the thoughts that keep repeating, they'll just continue leading me on. Can I tell you a quick story about yeah, feeding yes. the octopus? Feeding the monster? Yes, yes. <laughs> so I when I was writing my first book, Mm -hmm. many, 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 many years ago, the first draft of that, and my kids were very young, my two daughters, they ran across some writing that had OCD on it. And they're little kids, they have no idea what that means. Yeah, so they no. gave the acronym their own definition. They started calling it Octopuses Chewing Donuts. I thought about that. I oh, love that because that's really good. my OCD monster is very much an octopus with tentacles everywhere in my life. I am definitely feeding this monster. And I thought, well, I'm not really feeding it donuts. I'm feeding it doubt nuts. So we started calling it Octi, the OCD octopus, the octopus that chews doubt nuts. And that little metaphor has, has stuck around all these years. And I still refer sometimes to my OCD as Octi the octopus. And I still try to think about the times that I am feeding it doubt nuts. So it it aligns so well with what you've written in your brilliant lyrics there about feeding those thoughts that keep repeating. Absolutely love that. Well done. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, I remember reading about the doubt nuts and Octi and oh, that helped me. I created actually around that times when I started writing this, um, with direction of therapists and, you know, maybe, well, you're a writer, maybe you should, and it's just, do I really want to present the world, you know, all this in my mind, but it's, you know, you write what you know, and, and painful things are sometimes the best anyway, um, to read about or, or interesting and, and people appreciate that vulnerability. But anyway, the, um, my Octi, um, I named him ghost. Mm -hmm. um, and because I wrote a song that started the whole Hiccups universe called Ghost in Me. And it, Ghost in Me, OCD. Mm. So it was like, oh, perfect. Um, and that's that's a whole other song. But anyway, yeah, the I just wanted to attribute a little bit of that inspiration of finding Ghost in Me, um, which, I mean, it just helped to label it a little bit, even though it's... Absolutely. Even though we're our world is our domain, we... we decide what we want to label or what we want you know to have um that sort of inflexibility of, of having you know something so categorized but it helps to to 
put a name to it to be like, Absolutely. okay, ghost, ghost is doing this. Ghost is, I, I want to stare him down. Yeah. Right. Better than